whatever you call a yacht, so it will sail. These words from a children's book are perfect for a Hyundai Terrakin car. In translation, Terrakin sounds proudly, the con of the earth, but even the owners call it a cockroach. Koreans are hardworking and prudent people, and in order not to waste money, they made a night's move. They took the proven chassis and aggregate base of the Hyundai Galloper and put a new body on it. So in 2000 Terrakin was born. From an economic point of view, the approach is certainly correct, but from a practical point of view, it turned out that it was not very good. Correction for a markedly increased weight by Korean engineers was not made. And so the cockroach, as a couple of branded sores, almost never found on the gallop. As we were told in a specialized service, 3 out of 10 Terracans who come to MOT have bent front knuckles. True, it is not easy to understand that they have lost their geometry. After all, even a fully serviceable car does not shine with handling. It is prone to goat, very soft and rawly in corners, and the feedback on the steering wheel leaves much to be desired. The second problem, due to the increased weight, manifested itself in the rear suspension springs. They sink quite quickly, and this is without operating in full load modes. At the end of 2004, Terrakin received minor changes in appearance, but all the technical stuffing remained the same. Let's go through the nodes and assemblies living under the bottom. In the rear suspension, in addition to the mentioned springs, shock absorbers do not live very long. The shock absorbers are simple gas oil, and if they leak, then it is better to buy not the native Hyundai ones, but Kaiba. In the front torsion bar suspension, a small resource for the upper arms, ball bearings. In the steering system, the steering arm and pendulum lever are short-lived. There are leaks in the steering gear, and they cannot be radically cured, you can only add oil. In the brake system, calipers cause complaints, where the guides often turn sour. Well, rusty brake pistons are usually the result of a long drive with heavily worn discs and pads. All cardan crosses and splines are equipped with grease fittings, however, play in the splines is found in every third machine. Approximately in the same proportion, the buzz of the rear gearbox is noted, but you can drive with this sound for a very long time. For Terracan, two options for all-wheel drive were offered, permanent ATT, analogous to TOD and classic part-time 4WD with manual connection of the front axle EST. The transfer boxes for both systems are almost the same, and the difference is only in control. Both of these systems are not problem-free. In the transfer case, the electric drive for connecting the front axle and the mechanical part that it controls fail. Still possible problems in the vacuum part. Moreover, without a comprehensive diagnosis, it is most likely impossible to understand what exactly happened to the transmission. And in models with the ATT system, there is one feature associated with the ABS module. The following pattern is noted. If the battery is discharged to zero, three to four times in a car, the ABS brains can go crazy. And then the four-wheel drive will not work because the ATT computer analyzes the signals from the ABS sensors. By the way, there were also cheap rear-wheel drive versions. As for gearboxes, they are quite reliable. This applies to a simple automatic transmission into a manual transmission. And finally, about the engines. Three motors were offered for the model. There are no problems with the 3.5 liter gasoline, 195 to 200 horsepower, it eats fuel in an immodest amount, and that's it. True, it is imperative to monitor the numerous radiators, including the oil one, diesels also have it, which begins to flow with age. The 2.9L turbo diesel, 150 to 163 horsepower, with common rail fuel injection is a ticking time bomb. It is impossible even in the capital to adjust and repair its fuel equipment. If you manage to solve the problem by replacing the pump nozzles, 10,000 rubles apiece, consider yourself lucky. The second turbo diesel 2.5L, 100 horsepower, where a system with balancer shafts is used, is made under license from Mitsubishi. Repair of the injection pump for this engine is quite real and will cost 8,000 to 20,000 rubles. The turbines of both diesel engines, if you do not forget to cool them at idle, are hardy. All motors with the timing belt drive, the routine replacement of which is carried out after 60,000 kilometers. In case a belt breaks, in the best scenario, it will be possible to get rid of the replacement of the rockers, in the worst case, to change the head assembly. As for the body and frame, even the cars of the first years of production are still worthy. True, the edges of the wheel arches, hidden under the lining, begin to rust with age. Despite the frame and downshift, the 
the Terracan is a pure parquet SUV. It has low ground clearance and large overhangs, so torn bumpers are a harsh reality. Of course, someone will say that Terracan is not bad at least because it is inexpensive, but for some reason an aphorism comes to my mind that we are not rich enough to buy cheap things.